Hey guys, Brendan New Productions here, and welcome to a, another video. Um, it's been a while, hasn't it? It definitely has. I've I've been busy. My apologies. I've definitely been busy working on other projects and uh, doing other things, and I definitely need to more, make more time for uh, my YouTube channel, since you guys are my viewers, and you guys have provided me with so much. I really need to provide you with with a lot more than I am. So, here I am. Sorry, of course, first for the uh, clutter on my desktop. But today I'm going to be talking about Vim. Now, what is Vim? Vim is a text editor that's been around for a very, very, very long time. I'm not sure exactly when it was created, but I know that Vim, well, actually the original version, VI, has been around for at least at least 40 years. Okay, maybe 30 years. Um, now, what it is, is it's a terminal-based text editor that is very powerful, and it was it, it's usually used on Unix machines. However, I've been using it to do much of my programming and other text editing as well, and I found out that uh, I love it. It's honestly the most efficient text editor I've ever used, and I just love working with it. And hopefully through this series of tutorials, you understand why. Now, Vim is a text editor that has a relatively high learning curve, so if you don't understand it at first, and if you're not willing to put a little bit of time into it, this is definitely not the text editor for you. However, if you're willing to trade off a little bit of your time learning how to use Vim in order to improve your typing speed, how fast you'll be able to edit files, and just improve your programming or typing or editing skills overall, I think that this video tutorial series would be worth it. So let's go ahead and get started. Vim has versions on Windows, Mac, and Linux, and let's go ahead and go to the official Vim download page. Um, as you can see, the website looks a little dated, even the logo looks a little dated, and that is because, yes, it is very old. So you can see that it's got options for Unix, uh, Windows, Amiga, OS, Macintosh, and even others, whatever those others could be. Um, today we're just going to be installing it on my Windows machine. Uh, if you want to install it on other machines, go ahead, it works just the same. So let's go ahead and click on Windows here. And then we have a ton of options to choose from. Um, what we're going to be looking for is the installer here, um, which is here. So we're going to go ahead and click on this gvim74.exe. Now the G in front of Vim in this case stands for Graphical Vim uh, because Vim is actually a terminal utility and GVim allows you to launch it as a graphical window like you would any other text editor in Windows. I'm going to be teaching you in this tutorial how to use both, both versions. So now that we've downloaded the installer, we're just going to double click it and go ahead and say yes we can launch it. Yes we want to install. Let's agree to whatever this is. Um, let's go ahead and create Look at what we uh, can do here. All this all looks good. We're just going to install with the factory settings. Show the details because it looks cool. <laughs> so yeah. Now keep in mind, Vim is also since it's been around for so long, it is also extremely customizable. It was built with a plugin engine um, in mind, so they wanted it to be altered by a bunch of other people as the as the program aged and it has so as we continue with this vim tutorial series i will be also be discussing plugins or different things you can do to change your vim um, to the exact way that you want it so our vim's done installing we're going to go ahead and close the installer uh, we don't want to look at the readme because i'm going to be your readme i'm going to go ahead and minimize the download page <coughs> <coughs> my apologies i have a slight cough um, and then we've gotten three new icons on our desktop we've got vim easy vim easy and vim read only so let's go ahead and get started with the Vim option. So if we go ahead and double click Vim here, here is our text editor. Now go ahead, laugh at the font, it does look old, this is true. Well, let's just get editing. We're going to go ahead and just explore these file um, or these options really quick. And as you can see, um, it's got a lot of standard options. However, you'll probably notice that all of these uh, key bindings are extremely strange open colon e uh, split open colon sp uh, colon tab new all of these things have extremely weird key binding commands and that is because they are built to be the most efficient as possible so if you want to go ahead uh, we will just cover the very very basics right now um, if you want to go ahead and actually edit a file in vim there's two modes there's a command mode and there's an insertion mode the command mode allows you to execute commands um, using your keys, and the insertion mode just allows you to type. So before we cover any specific commands or anything, I'm just going to show you how to get to the insertion mode. So to get to the insertion mode, by default, Vim automatically opens in command mode. So to get to the insertion mode, we press I on our keyboard. 
And as you can see in the bottom left hand corner of Vim here, it says insert. And now we can go ahead and type as we usually would. Um, everything is just everything is just like you would imagine in Notepad or whatever program you like to use. Now, if we want to get out of insert mode and go back into command mode, we can press the escape key. Go back into insert mode, we press I. Back into uh, command mode, we press escape. Now, just like the key bindings here suggest, if we want to go ahead and save our document, we type colon W. And actually, since we opened the... Uh, I think colon W will do nothing. Yeah, um, we actually opened just the application without actually creating anything. So we would have to type a, a file name. So W stands for write. So we're going to write a file, and we're just going to colon W uh, test.txt. So as you can see in our bottom left-hand corner, it says text.txt has been written. And if you look to the left of our window, we actually have a new text file on our desktop called test.txt. So if we actually change it, we can go into insert mode by pressing I, and then we can go to the end of the line with the arrow keys, press enter a few times, and this is yet another line. If we press escape, colon W, you can see that it will update our text test text file, and the desktop icons go a little crazy. And then let's say we're done editing. So if we want to quit, we can type colon Q, and then we'll quit. And that's that. That's how you use Vim. Now say you did not want to use the window version, however, and you actually wanted to use the terminal version. There's a couple things we actually need to do to um, in order to do this. So in Windows, uh, the terminal is called Command Prompt, so we can just go ahead and go to the Start menu and open up a Command Prompt here. And we get a Command Prompt that's automatically defaulted to the user's directory. If we type in dir, we can get a list of all files that are inside of that directory. However, we know that we want to be on the desktop. So we can type cd for change directory to get in the desktop. Now, I'm assuming that if you want to use vim in the terminal, um, you're already familiar with all of these commands, so I don't really think that I need I need to be teaching them to you. But So if we type in dir here, we can see that our test.txt file is in this directory. So in order to actually edit the test.txt file, we need to launch vim from the terminal. Now the way that this works is Windows actually has this um, this problem where when you, or it's not a problem, it's what op all operating systems have these days. When you type in a command, what it does is it scans all of the um, all of the folders that that are located within a path variable. So your system has a path variable that is simply a collection of directories. And when you type in a command, the system scans all of those directories in the path variable and looks for that executable file. So since we recently just installed Vim, if we type Vim from the terminal, there may be a chance that it will work and there may be a chance if it doesn't depending on your installation. Let's just assume it doesn't because I don't want to make this tutorial any harder than it actually is. So in order to actually add this command to your path variable in Windows you're going to want to click on your uh, start menu right click on computer press properties. Now keep in mind this is for Windows 7 I assume that the task will be very similar in Windows XP, Windows Vista, Windows 8, Windows 8.1 what have you. Then we're going to go ahead and go into the advanced system settings and then in this window, we're going to go ahead and click on environment variables. And now in this system variable section, we have to find the path variable, which is right here. And if we actually edit this variable, we can see that all it is is a bunch of different paths separated by semicolons, which is exactly what we need. So now all we need to do is we need to add Vim's path to the end of this path variable. So in order to find Vim's path, we can just open up a file explorer. And I believe we installed it to C, program files, vim which we did now all we need to do is find where the vim.exe file is so it could be in vim 74 or vim files let's check vim 74 and here it is it's actually vim.exe inside of vim 74 so now we take this path here c slash program files slash vim slash vim 74 we copy it i did so using control c on the keyboard and then we can go ahead and just put it on the end of this path variable and press OK. Then we're going to press OK here, press OK here, X out of here, and since we just altered our path variable, we actually need to close this terminal and open up a new one. No big deal. Now we're going to change into the desktop again, and since Vim is now in our path variable, we should be able to type in Vim and then the file name. So as you recall, the file name is called test.txt, 
and Vim opens inside of the terminal. And it's just like it was in the windowed mode, except now we're in a terminal. Of course, in Windows, this wouldn't really be that good of a practice, uh, because, I mean, who uses the command prompt in Windows enough where they need to launch programs from it? If you were running a Unix machine or maybe a Mac machine and you and you used the terminal quite often, this may be a thing that you want to do. However, in Windows, it's a little unnecessary. But, but we'll just explore it. We'll, through these series of tutorials, we'll see what happens. So thanks for watching this introduction on how to use Vim in Windows. This is part one of a many-part series. I hope that you enjoyed. And if you're interested, just, just keep on watching for those next parts because they're coming. Thanks for watching, have a wonderful day, and I hope to see you all in future videos. Peace.